Hi, and welcome to Studio La Jocrie. Larry Krieg here with you again. Froggy is uh, here to help out, and he is uh, uh, eager to get me uh, going on my Singapore report for you. In July, I had the opportunity of spending a few days in Singapore. Singapore, island city-state on the Malacca Straits between Indonesian Sumatra and Malaysia, practically on the equator. A remarkable place, like Hong Kong in many ways. Former British colony, large number of Chinese people, but unlike Hong Kong, still independent and proudly remaining so. Economic powerhouse, trade and banking center of Southeast Asia, the Lion City, with no lions, but with many superlative titles, most technology-ready city, best investment potential, world's safest country, most competitive country, world's smartest city, and so on. I traveled to Singapore from Japan for a conference on digital railway management. The flight from Tokyo is 3,331 miles, 6 hours and 38 minutes on the 777 that I flew as shown on this animation from Singapore Airlines. Their national airline is rated by several travel authorities as the best in the world. And Singapore's Changi Airport has held the title Best Airport in the World for several years running. Well, what's transportation on the ground like in this nation of 279 square miles with 5.6 million people? That's 20,000 plus people in every square mile, the third densest nation in the world after Macau and Monaco. It's also one of the most expensive cities to live in. The GDP per capita is over 90,000 US dollars. One in six Singaporeans has more than a million dollars in disposable wealth, though. Cars are stringently restricted, and a license to drive one is worth as much as most luxury cars in the U.S. So more people use transit, which comes in three primary flavors. Let's start with the first flavor, buses. Naturally, many people travel in chartered buses like this. This appears to be a school bus, if you can believe it. More than 8,000 children from out of Singapore attend international schools here. There are four public bus companies operating in Singapore, though I only got photos of two of them with the most buses. Buses are tied closely to more high-density transit. The second flavor is Singapore's Mass Rapid Transit, or MRT. This is the bus plaza connected with Choa Chu Kang MRT station. Getting from the train to the bus is a community event, as I found one afternoon in the little India MRT station. trains look like ordinary subways, but they are all autonomous vehicles. You'll notice the sliding platform barrier gates keep everybody out of harm's way. Here 
here's a caboose ride from the rear window of an MRT running underground. As we get to a station, you'll hear the automated announcements in Singapore's four official languages. English, the common language of business, education, and government, and the colonial legacy language that ties everyone together. Mandarin Chinese, Malay, and Tamil from South India, the last three are the main ethnic groups in Singapore. The third flavor of transportation is what Singapore calls light rail transit, or LRT, though elsewhere it would be called a people mover. These are also automated and are used to supplement buses in some of the newer public housing areas. Ninety percent of Singaporeans own their own homes, but most are condo-like properties in the high-rise buildings that provide housing for most people.
Singapore also has lots of parks, which I haven't shown in this video, but which are also world famous. Froggy insists that I show you these, but they will have to wait till the next video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed Singapore's superlative transport.